Welcome back to our channel. And today this video will be fairly short, I hope. Mostly a walkthrough of how to get at and use OpenXR in Steam. But uh, take a look at this battery indicator. I've still got five bars. I've been using this battery for two weeks with the Pimax Hub. And uh, I play about two, three hours a night. And then it charges up by itself overnight, which is pretty cool, you know. Um, and far better than... than uh, than I thought might be possible when we first started. I was kind of like, oh boy, a battery, really? I mean, I knew the uh, I knew the um, XR2 chip required one, but Pimax came up with a pretty good solution here. And they sent everybody who bought a crystal, a power hub, that uh, you plug your headset into, and then it supplies extra power to run back through the headset, uh, through the cables to the, the, um, the headset. So, yeah, it's working pretty well. Anyway, Steam and Steam XR. It seems weird, doesn't it? We've uh, I've never thought of uh, Steam and XR together. We use Matt Buccianari's uh, OpenXR toolkit and his runtime for OpenXR, but we don't need to anymore. Flight Sim 2020 supports OpenXR natively now, and so does Steam. So let's start by opening up Steam VR. I said, let's start by opening up Steam VR. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I haven't got that twice, have I? Probably I do. Okay, so you can see in Steam VR settings here, we've got the usual thing, but we have, you know, player area, dashboard controllers, blah, 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 and then, then something new. <laughs> Open XR, baby. This one's for you. And I've already selected the correct runtime. It gives you an opportunity. The first time you run OpenXR to choose the runtime that'll work with your headset. And for the Pimax Crystal, that's the Steam VR runtime. It's confusing. I don't know why it doesn't say Steam XR, but it says Steam VR. But it actually is the Open XR runtime. I think if you have an Oculus of some sort or a, a Meta headset or something else, it might give you a different labeled API. But they all basically do the same thing. They run OpenXR within Steam. Then you can manage the API layers. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying things that you can do within API if you tell, or things you can do within XR if you tell XR they're okay. <laughs> that's what this does. It basically says, hey, OpenXR, I want to use the OpenXR toolkit. Okay. Want to use XR Next Saver? Oh, that's a beauty in DCS. Okay. And OpenXR to provide output for OBS. One of these days, friends, I am going to learn how to use OBS properly. I know my friend Sky King just grinds his teeth when he sees me struggling with it because he's so good at it. But anyway, it's turned on, so sooner or later I'll figure out how to use it. So let's close that, and then let's go to Developer and just see that we're okay. Current Open XR runtime is SteamVR. So we're good to go. Now, I prefer... Uh, yeah, I prefer to start Steam uh, Flight Sim 2020 through Steam, if that makes sense. I can start it from here using games, and, and that works about 90% of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. Usually I just come into here to set the, the Pimax Crystal settings that I want. And I, for render quality, I choose balanced. Uh, fixed foveated rendering is off for me. I can't do eye tracking or uh, uh, dynamic foveated rendering with the software I'm using right now. I'm using a beta Pimax um, uh, play because uh, we're testing a couple of other things. Anyway, we don't need it today. Just understand that when we get it back, it'll improve the experience uh, maybe five, six frames per second, maybe more. So. I'm going to leave everything set like that. I really don't need to do anything with that. I'm going to open Steam. And I want to use Matt's OpenXR toolkit. But one of the really interesting things that I found with Steam XR is that I can't use the OpenXR toolkit if I'm not also running uh, FPS VR which is the frame counter and system analysis tool in Steam. I tried a number of times and it just wouldn't come up. And finally, out of desperation, you know, because desperation 
breeds more results in my life than intelligence ever will. God help me. Um, so let's turn that on first because then I'll be able to use Matt's program, which I love very much. And now we'll go back to the library again and we'll click on Flight Simulator and we'll let that start. And that'll take a while. Uh, so while it's loading, I'll go uh, maybe make myself a coffee and a sandwich. I don't know, have a hot bath, a shower, a shave, I don't know, something like that. Come back when it's loaded. <laughs> Through the magic of editing, we'll be in the cockpit next. Well, now through the magic of editing, <laughs> we're back in the airplane at Valdez Airport in Valdez. And uh, we're running Steam XR. It seems weird to say Steam XR because we've always said Steam VR. And uh, it seems to work pretty well. I mean, I wouldn't say it's seamless. What I would like is to see Steam just put a big button up somewhere that says, Press this, and thou shalt be in OpenXR. And you, they don't have to use that voice or anything, but, I, you know, whatever. But um, I'd like them to have a menu right up front, where you just press it to choose between Steam VR and Steam XR. And then if you choose Steam XR, it takes you to the setup, and that would be simpler than looking for it under Settings, in VR, because uh, you know, for, for for people new to it, it's kind of confusing. First, you open up uh, um, Steam, and you click on Settings, and it doesn't say anything about VR. You have to open VR and then click in the VR menu within the VR box, and then choose Settings. Anyway, let's go flying. <clears throat> I notice at Valdez, I get uh, <laughs> well quite a bit better frame rate than in New York. Uh, for me, New York is the, the place where frame rate goes to die in VR. I just kind of chose Valdez at random. Pardon me if I sniff and sneeze and uh, run out of breath. I'm still fighting that uh, lung infection and uh, now I, on top of it, I've got a summer cold. Oh, poor me. Aren't I pitiful? Yeah. Anyway, it looks really good, I think. Um, Ed Buccianeri told me that uh, it's only maybe four or five frames per second slower than the OpenXR runtime he designed for Pimax itself. And I think, okay, that's all right. That's close enough for me because it's, it's one less thing, one less layer to have to start up. And anything we can do to make it easier for new people to VR and flight simming is good. And if they don't have to run an extra program to do OpenXR, well, so much the better. If you can set it all up in Steam, then just start Steam and away you go. The one thing I have noted, and I think I pointed it out before, is that the only way I can see um, the OpenXR toolkit is if I'm also running in Steam uh, FPS VR which I'm not really crazy about um, but anyway because it's slow it, it, it costs me a few frames per second so I'll figure out I'm either I'm doing something wrong or there's or there's a glitch I mean it's it's all a work in progress for me learning how to use it and Asobo and Pimax and Matt and everybody else perfecting their various roles within it but I have to say I think it's you know it's looking pretty good wow this is pretty VR tourism in an airplane you know I'm never gonna get to go to these places in my lifetime so this to me is a wonderful thing and it's only get, gonna get better we're just on the on the cusp of a new reality. There's going to come a time when when we won't be able to, stink, to distinguish what we see in the headset from what we see in the real world. We're not there yet. But by golly, I don't think it'll be long. 
certainly within the next well anytime I make a prediction I've been wrong so I'll just warn you of that up front I, you know, I, I was the guy who said oh come on Tripolator coffee makers they'll never catch on people like their percolators okay that, w that could have been me but it wasn't you know. but I would have been the guy saying Henry Ford what are you thinking the Model T is the success story of the century. Don't change a thing, baby. <laughs> or else I'd be, uh, else I'd be pushing for something really radical. Either way, I'd probably be wrong. Not am, not only am I not the sharpest tool in the shed, my friends, but sometimes I'm in the wrong shed completely, standing in the dark and wondering what the hell I'm doing there. So Valdez looks beautiful in XR. And it's just so cool to to do this. Now that I got... Oh, by the way, I had a lot of problems with VR for a while. Um, I turned Hags on at the recommendation of a friend of mine. That's hardware accelerated graphics scheduling in Windows. If you've got a Pimax headset, very few Pimax users have found that works for them. Sky King is one of them, but for me, it completely destroyed the experience. It was just a, it stuttered so bad and vibrated and shook so much that I, I got physically ill in VR with it. And for some reason, it made my colors look like crap. So I turned it off. And I don't know if there's a causal connection there. When I turned it off, everything got smooth again and the colors started looking great again as they should in the crystal. Um, I'm using a beta version of the Pimax client and uh, we're testing some other things. So this particular uh, client has local dimming turned off, I think, and also uh, eye tracking isn't on. But that's not a big deal for me because I know what my IPD is. And when I get the next uh, uh, Pimax client update, um, I'll be able to use eye tracking and dynamic foveated rendering again, and we'll see another 10 frames per second, maybe. Well, that was more of an arrival and a landing, but I'll take it. I've done worse than that. I remember my first flight instructor in tail draggers. It was an old... Air Force pilot, he could fly anything. I swear to God, put wings on a plank, he'd figure out how to land it. And uh, <laughs> we were flying a Cessna 140, and he demonstrated three perfect touch and touch and goes. And then when we came to a full stop, we bounced once, we bounced twice, we bounced three times, and finally settled down. And he looked at me and said, "Well," I said, "Well, the third one was pretty good." <laughs> And then when I started flying tail draggers, I realized, you know, when I got a little better at it, I realized that uh, you're never more than a second away from an ignominious landing in a tail dragger. The rule of thumb I always used is if I bounce twice, I power on and go around. Because it's probably not going to give. Anyway, you know, that's all water under the bridge now since I don't fly anymore. But I do fly in VR, and I enjoy making these videos for you. And I hope this has been useful to you in learning how to use OpenXR in Steam. If it has, I hope you'll take a second to click the like button and maybe even consider subscribing if you don't mind listening to an old fat man drone on every now and then. I'd sure appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. We'll talk soon.